So, today we are going to do the Burdizzo method of castration. So we have our Burdizzo emasculating pliers right here. So these are what we use. So what it does is it clamps the cord, the spermatic cord, um, which cuts off blood supply to the testicles and they don't shrivel up and fall off like if you do the banding method, but they do noticeably shrink in size and um, he gets to keep them, but they just don't grow and don't produce testosterone. Um, we are gonna give him a little bit of banamine paste. So this is a painkiller, anti-inflammatory. You do have to get this one from your veterinarian and the dose is one cc per hundred pounds. So we adjust it depending on his weight. He's about 40 pounds. So we're gonna give him a dose for 40 pounds. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit before we get started about the two different methods um, on why I prefer the Burdizzo clamp versus doing the banding. So if you're not familiar, the banding is kind of what you do to lamb's tails where you put a very tight rubber band around both testicles um, and they it cuts the blood supply. It takes two weeks to a month usually then they shrivel up and fall off. Now that's ideally. Now there's a lot of bands out there I've seen like the ones at Tractor Supply or they have a little bit too much of a gap in the band. They're more for lamb's tails. Um, you have to make sure if you're banding you get the right ones, but I'm going to tell you why I prefer this method over banding. You can cause a lot more damage, infection, um, pain with banding. It's easier for the human because you don't have to do the pliers and feel the crunch, um, but it's a lot harder on your goats than you think. When the, and the, <laughs> our little guy is not a fan of being tied up here though. Now he is four months old, so this is the age um, that I prefer to do it. You don't, you can do it past 12 weeks, which is three months, um, but you want them to be fully mature, their urethra, so that it doesn't cause stone issues. Uh, but again, so going back to the difference between Rodizo and banding, the banding is a rubber band that you put around the testicles, below the teeth, and you wait and it causes them pain for weeks until they shrivel up and fall off. Sometimes there's a lot of flies that irritate the area. They get a secondary infection. Um, they can get fevers. You have to give antibiotics. The, I'm, I'm talking worst case scenarios, but with the clamp, all you're doing is, and I'll kind of give a dry run here to, so we can, we can see. Um, so you're you're grabbing the you got a feel in here and on this there's two two testicles and I like to do the left side first because I'm right-handed and they are usually a little bit more relaxed when you do the first one so they don't pull them up so tight so I tend to go through and I get my pliers in here and I kind of grab the cord this way and a lot of times when people make the mistake is they're not holding this cord. So I kind of use my thumb and push against the bottom part of the um, pliers, see the little tooth? You want that on the bottom. So I push my thumb against the bottom and I make sure I can feel those cords in there. So I make sure those cords are trapped within the plier jaws and they're not going to jump out. That's a lot of times where the mistake happens. So see, I'm, I'm not pulling too hard because you can tell he's not really upset by it, but I just lightly am pushing my thumb against there, making sure those cords are in my fingers. And I'm gonna hold on to that the whole time that I clamp. And if you notice too, um, the other angle that you were just at, the pliers are behind the teeth. So males have a teat as well as females. Uh, and I don't go all the way across the, the scrotum. I do one side at a time. So if everybody's ready, we're gonna do, yeah, so let's, let's grab the back leg up. Okay, so pull that back leg up. 
and we hold for 10 seconds. So here we go. Ready? Okay. So we clamp and we just hold. And a lot of times there's an initial complaint, but that's about all they do usually. And then we hold 10 seconds and then we release the pliers. And you can see there's that little dent there. So that's where the clamp was. Now when we do the other side, I'm not gonna go straight across. I'm gonna make sure I have a space between there so you don't, you're not compromising the blood flow to the scrotum. You just wanna clamp those cords. So I'll leave a bit of a gap there on the other side. Okay, you can release his leg for right now. And let him stand a second. Okay, so that's one side down. It's really not too, too bad, he really, Complains that the initial clamp, it's just like piercing your ears, is how I put it. Would you rather have your ears pierced and be done? Or would you rather somebody put a rubber band on the end of your ear and let it, you know, be there for two weeks to a month and fall off? So if you think about it, uh, this method is, is less painful. So, I'm going to take a quick recess here. <laughs> because the goats are trying to break into the feed shed. Same leg, it's just so he doesn't kick me in the... You're just holding a little more on the Ready? Okay, so we're back. We had a slight break into the feed shed, but crisis averted. So we've done the one side, the left side, which um, we kind of showed. Now we're going to do the right side, and then he'll be done. So we got our little bit of our indent there on the left side. So. Again, I'm right-handed. So here's the teeth, you can get a closer view. So I put that on the bottom, and then when I get the, you can feel the cords in here, you scooch them all the way over to the side, and I use my thumb, and I push against that tooth under there, just lightly. Obviously, he's not complaining. And see how I don't go straight across. So I'm gonna clamp right here, and I'm gonna hold it for 10 seconds. Ready? Here we go. He's all right. Usually it's the initial pinch that obviously hurts a little bit, but they're not complaining the whole time. The clamp's still on there. You do have to push the clamp all the way until you feel it kind of click, kind of like, um, what are those pliers that, uh, vice grip pliers? Yeah. So. Okay, so there you see, we've got our staggered, our staggered, clamp areas there, we're below the teat, and the cords have been pinched. And so we're taking note of the size of his testicles right now, and Mary here, who is his owner, is going to watch and make sure both of those are shrinking up in the next few weeks, not one getting bigger, one getting smaller, both getting bigger. So I'm pretty confident that we got him, we got a good clamp on him, but if you do notice, <laughs> one side getting bigger you need to redo that side um, or if you see and it, it can take two weeks to a month for the testosterone to fully be out of their system so you want to make sure you still keep them separated from mom or younger does that you don't want bread so we're going to give him a little bit of banamine here and adjust it for his size So he might go home and lay down a little bit today, but that's all the effect that he'll have. There's no blood, there's no cutting, um, and we now have a castrated goat who we can consider a weather. And um, now with weathers, 
you do in any buck really you should do an ammonium chloride treatment and not feed grain because uh, they do get stones easier uh, females don't typically get bladder stones they can but uh, males have an S curve in their urinary tract and if they build up um, too much phosphorus uh, or calcium in their feed it can cause I can't remember which one it is I think it's too much phosphorus but usually um, with any feed or you want a two to one ratio I still suggest just not feeding boys grain to help prevent any problems um, I like to give my boys a Timothy pellet they feel like they're getting grain, but really it's just a grass pellet. So when I feed my girls grain, the boys get Timothy. So, um, but yep, he should be good to go. He can, in a month, mix with the ladies and no problem of um, him breeding anybody. Unwanted breeding is happening, but he's a pretty boy or he'll be a really good pet as a weather. So, um, I do want to show you one more thing. This little guy is almost a month old and he is too small to weather. So he is the size that you do not want to weather a little guy this size. You see. <laughs> not that you really need to see his nads. You can do it, but it's not advised. So this little guy would have a higher chance of having bladder stones when um, banded or rodezoed or any kind of castration at his age. He's just a little too small. He needs his urinary tract to develop a little bit more. So this guy is perfect. Now some people think you can't Burdizo past a certain age. That's not necessarily true. I Burdizo all the way from four months to a year. As long as you get somebody who can help hold that leg up, you can put him in a milk stand. Um, if they get too big or past a year, I would have your vet sedate them, but you can still do the Burdizo method. There is a larger clamp that is used on calves. Uh, if the boys get a little bit bigger, uh, you can use the bigger clamp. So, but I hope you found that video informational and helpful. And um, subscribe if you haven't already. And feel free to ask us any questions. Thanks.